I'm joined by Kareem Sajid Poor uh, and uh, Chip Reed, who is with the president out in Nevada. Uh, Kareem, uh, let's just start with this announcement uh, that we got from the uh, watchdog agency. Uh, does this move it up a notch? Does it now appear that Iran is closer developing a nuclear payload for a weapon? I don't think this changes any of the fundamentals, Bob. I think everyone, uh, especially within Washington, uh, already recognized that Iran was in pursuit of a nuclear weapons capability. Uh, and I think this report reaffirms that. Uh, past IAA reports were more reluctant to use that type of strident language because the previous general director, Mohammed al Baradei, uh, was fearful of the prospect of a U.S. or Israeli military strike against Iran. So he tried to couch things in, in more peaceful terms. But I think the current director general, uh, Japanese general director, uh, Amano, uh, is not holding back like al Baradei is. Well, Chip Reed, uh, you're with uh, President Obama who's out uh, in Nevada today campaigning for the embattled Senate uh, Democratic leader Harry Reid. Uh, how did the uh, White House uh, take this when they got this report yesterday? Does this uh, signify we may get some changes in, in the uh, U.S. Uh, strategy toward dealing with Iran? Well, not really changes. It, they say it just reaffirms what they already thought, that Iran is uh, moving in the direction of building a nuclear weapon. They also cited uh, evidence of uh, in, uh, more secrecy. Uh, on the part of Iran, uh, not allowing inspectors in certain areas, uh, suggesting that there's more going on that meets the eye. But when we asked White House and national security people, when is this tough new regime of sanctions going to come out, this new uh, statement that would include China and Russia, presumably, on the statement, they say, quote, we're working on it in earnest. So uh, ever since uh, the first of the year, which was the deadline that the White House posed uh, for uh, Iran to uh, do something uh, favorable or uh, face new sanctions. Uh, we've been waiting for the question of when to be answered, and so far they have not answered it, but they say they're working hard on it, but it really requires getting China and Russia on board, and that is not easy, Bob. Well, uh for example, the Wall Street Journal today editorializes that, uh, that engagement, the, the policy of trying to engage with Iran, uh, has simply failed and it's time to move on to something else. But as I hear you this morning, Chip, uh, that is not uh, the attitude at the White House right now. There's not a dramatic change. This just reaffirms what they've said all along. They believe that they've got to move ahead with tough new sanctions. And we're still waiting to see what those sanctions are going to be. Uh, and the question everybody's been asking when, you know, ever since the first of the year, the question has been when. Uh, and uh, they haven't been able to come up with anything yet. And the presumption is that the difficulty is getting China uh, and Russia on board. Uh, Kareem, why is it that uh, China and Russia don't view sanctions in the same way that we do in this country? Well, China and Russia have always been instinctively opposed to sanctions. China, for example, is a, is a need of energy. Iran has energy, so there's a very strong commercial relationship between the two sides. And I think Russia has looked at their relationship with Iran in the context of the U.S.-Russia relationship. They've been reluctant to simply uh, take Washington's talking points at face value. But I think actually the benefit of the engagement approach has been the fact that we've exposed Tehran as the intransigent actor in this equation, not the United States. Two, three years ago when I would talk to European diplomats or even Russian and Chinese diplomats, they would complain much more about Washington's unwillingness to engage Tehran uh, than Tehran's inflexibility. And now the game has changed after a year of really bending over backwards to try to change the tone and context of the U.S.-Iran relationship. I think the Obama administration has uh, created more international cohesion than ever before. And more importantly, I think they've really widened the internal divides within Iran, both among political elites and between the population and the regime. Well, well let me ask you this. Just uh, China, for example, we know they need energy in that part of the world. We know Russia has big commercial interests in Iran. But are those two countries prepared to live with a nuclear-armed Iran? I think that at the moment they don't see the threat of Iran crossing that nuclear threshold as imminent. Um, ultimately, it's not in their interests uh, either. Uh, ultimately, I actually think the Russians and Chinese will come on board to sanctions which they've diluted, which they've, uh, uh, they themselves have, 
have watered down somewhat. Uh, you, you think that they will eventually will, will go along with sanctions? I think in the first half of March we will see another UN Security Council resolution in which China and Russia have signed up to. But I would argue that the UN Security Council resolutions are more politically consequential than they are economically consequential. The more economically consequential sanctions will come out of the European Union and the United States. And, and Chip, uh, one final question for you. We know that the Congress has been trying to put together some sanctions and uh, up until this point the administration has been a little lukewarm about the sanctions being prepared on Capitol Hill. Uh, but my sense is that they may be willing to uh, now to let the Congress go ahead and design some sort of sanctions. Uh, they may be. Uh, it, that's not certain yet, but uh, certainly there are signs that that is a possibility. Uh, but certainly their focus right now is on getting China and uh, Russia on board with, uh, with these uh, much broader uh, global, uh, the global effort to uh, impose sanctions uh, on Iran. Do you, Karim, do you think Iran wants nuclear weapons or do you think they just want the capability? Uh, Bob, if we were having this conversation a year ago, I would say that they're in pursuit of the Japan model, which is essentially wanting to be a screwdriver turn away. I think in the aftermath of these tainted presidential elections, you have now a group of hardliners running the country who may well believe that they've ceded so much legitimacy in the aftermath of the elections that the only way to recoup that legitimacy is indeed by crossing that nuclear threshold. So I think that uh, we no longer can take for granted that they just want to be a screwdriver turn away. They could well be pursuing the North Korea model now. Kareem, thank you so much. Thank you, Bob.